Well, now we move on to consider <coughs> what we call the open centre, which uh, is a position usually characterised by an early open file, either the E or the D files. And in this type of position, active, accurate development is the order of the day. So let's see a couple of games now where we get this open central position. And the first game I'm going to show you is very interesting. It uh, is a game between Hikaru Nakamura playing white and Grandmaster Simon Williams from England playing black. And it comes from the European uh, Club Cup, which took place in Eilat in Israel in 2012. Um, the opening was very quiet, funnily enough. It was an exchange French. But this does lead to a position where, here we are, we've got this open central position. The E file becomes open very quickly. Now, you would expect that in a position like this, it could easily fizzle out to a draw with a lot of exchanges on the open file. So if you play like this, you've got to have a clear idea how you're going to, if you want to win, spice things up. And Nakamura decides to play the line of the exchange French with knight f3, which might best be described as a wolf in sheep's clothing. Outwardly, white setup is very modest, but in fact, he's got some dangerous attacking options based on the move uh, c4, as we'll see. Another uh, specific feature of the opening choice in this game is that Williams is known as an aggressive attacking player. So when you play this way, you, you take away a lot of Black's attacking options that the French defence provides. And you change the nature of the position. A lot of French players like semi-open games with closed centres. This is as open as it gets in the French. So anyway, Williams uh, decides to play c6, which is a good move, just bolstering his central position. And both sides deploy their pieces as actively as they can in the opening. Black plays knight e7 in order to facilitate the move, bishop f5. If we think of the bishop on c8 in terms of black's worst bishop, and we, we work this out by trying to look at the central pawns, white's central pawn is on a dark square, black's central pawns are on light squares, so it would be quite a nice idea if black could play his bishop out to f5 easily and just exchange off the bishops. So white decides to put a bit of pressure on the centre before that actually happens, and black castles h3. Well, h3 might seem like a bit of a luxury in this position, but um, I think white is a little bit concerned that black might be thinking about bishop g4 in due course. So he just takes away that move. Black takes on c4, white takes with the bishop, and now black just deploys his knight to b6, and in the end he's going to put a knight in on d5, or at least that seems to be the intention. So we've got a position from the open centre, which is quite interesting. It's not at all a boring routine exchange French. It's going to be a sharp game. And the main reason it's sharp is that White has inherited what we call an isolated pawn. I'll be talking a little bit more about this type of uh, theme later on in the DVD. But basically, if you own the isolated pawn, you've got to keep active, try and keep the pieces on the board. And if you are playing against the isolated pawn, it's a good idea to seek exchanges, aim for end games. It's not at all easy to do. I would say probably strong players prefer to play with the isolated pawn if they've got suitable activity than to play against it. OK, bishop b3 and now h6. And I think the reason Williams plays this reciprocal pawn move is that uh, he's trying to keep white out of g5. For instance, bishop g5 might be a nice move to start a white initiative. White can't do that now, so he takes the open file. This seems like a good moment to play bishop f5, since black can't challenge the open file at this moment. And now white puts his knight in on e5. A very good move, and very much in keeping with active, aggressive development in these open central positions. And there are um, three key ideas behind this move. Number one, white is setting free his queen. The queen might shoot out to either f3, or even further, to h5. In both cases, putting pressure on the black king. Secondly, white moves the knight into a very aggressive position and increases the pressure on f7. Of course, black can take the knight, but he doesn't really want to be giving up his dark square bishop if he can help it. And the third point is that white might reinforce that knight by playing f4. Now, that looks a little loose, but uh, it's quite a common theme in this line. 
right, often advances his kingside pawns, and that can cause the bishop on f5 to become completely swapped. So there are plenty of aggressive ideas in this isolated queen's pawn position. So anyway, Williams really doesn't like that knight and chops it off, but that's a major concession, of course, giving up his dark square bishop. I guess uh, black could play to keep the bishop with a move like queen c7, but then comes queen to f3. And now, black could be getting into some trouble here. The position of that white queen is really awkward for black. It's a nice aggressive position for the queen. If black retreats with e6, hoping to gain some activity here, let's say after a capture, queen g4, knight f5, then I think white could go knight g6 and put his other knight on e4. And white's enjoying a, a nice attacking position here. Um, OK, it's not winning or anything like it, but I think most position, most people would prefer to be white. Uh, his pieces are on really nice squares. So Williams doesn't like that. He's not a natural defender. He takes on e5, and he plays his queen up to d7. But this just seems as though it gives white a very nice position indeed after queen f3, bishop e6, and now queen to e4. Enviable centralisation by white, really putting the pressure on the bishop on e6. So black... Having set this up, he's got to put his knight on d5. That's thematic. That's what we call thematic, because black is aiming to do this. He does it. Well, white takes on d5. He probably didn't want to make that move, because with the isolated queen spawn, you don't want to get the pieces off, really. But I think, you know, black is developing a little bit of pressure here. So white takes, and the point of that exchange is to bring the bishop back to c2. So out of nowhere, in a, you know, a... Uh, a quiet exchange French, or supposedly quiet exchange French. White has fashioned a very strong attack. He's immediately threatening queen to h7 checkmate. He's got his bishops glaring at the black king. I mean, it, it seems at any moment that bishop takes h6 could be imminent. And he controls the open central file. Very dominant pieces in the centre. Black's position, solid but passive. Um... I just don't like this position very much for black. I, I just feel uncomfortable defending against the impending attack. You know the attack's coming. You're really going to have to find accurate moves to defend against it. So Williams played f5, which again is, is loosening. He wouldn't want it to have done that, but he probably felt there was no alternative. Of course, uh, Black is holding his head above water here. He knows that his bishop's attacked, but of course, he's counter-attacking the queen. Now, I'm sure a lot of players would just consider knight f6 here, but after queen h4, you know, this, this white attack is, is really strong. I mean, bishop takes h6 is a clear threat. Um, and there are some interesting variations here. Whichever rook Black puts on d8, I mean, if he puts the rook on d8, intending take on h6, take on d4, then I think queen g3 is a good move. And uh, possibly the only move here is to get involved in dubious complications after knight g4. But you can see why black would not want to do this, because, uh, you know, he's entering into a really precarious position. OK, the queen's come off, but white's initiative persists. And against Nakamura, you know, you might not be able to see your way through this variation completely. You just think, oh, my God, my king is wide open. Something's bound to happen. So Williams prefers, going back to the game, f5 and just white keeps the pressure on by retreating his uh, queen so black protects his bishop a modest move by white just bringing his bishop out to d2 but that's good because it limits the knight on d5 knight b6 and now rook e1 hitting that bishop one more time bishop comes in why not attack queen comes to e3 a nice safe square and black plays queen f7 Bishop B, uh, sorry, B3, nudging the bishop back to D5, and now white occupies the seventh rank. So you can see, <coughs> control of this open file has persisted into the middle game, and black can't shake it off. And whilst white is in control of the open file, he's in full control of the position. Black again ingeniously counters this pressure by threatening mate himself. White stops the mate, and now black drops back, protecting the seventh rank. Rook takes F7, queen takes F7, and this powerful control persists. The queen comes into e5, attacking the pawn on f5. And surprisingly, that is a really difficult move to meet. I mean, if black plays 
f4, the pawn just drops. If he protects the pawn with rook f8, we can go bishop b4. Surprising how strong that piece is, is suddenly becoming. And in the game, after a5, Nakamura is able to gobble this pawn uh, quite cleanly. And now white is a pawn up with the two bishops in an open position. Should be winning. Black moves his king. White plays h4. Black plays a4, trying to get some play. And now h5, trying to get a mating attack together against the black king. I point out in my notes the bishop f4 is, is probably stronger here. Um, with a coordinated attack after king f6, g4, takes, takes, knight c8, and now bishop e5, check. Very dangerous indeed for black. Nakamura prefers h5. Williams takes on b3. And now it's interesting to note that if he takes on b3 again, Nakamura is going to land a check, and then he's going to play rook b1 with a killer skewer against the bishop and knight. So just going back, Williams played king f6. White played bishop d3. An excellent move. And now bishop f4. So white has given back his pawn. He's piling in on the black king with two bishops and a rook. And rook b1 is also in the position. Black has it all to do to hold this game. And in fact, Williams can't hold it. He plays bishop c4. Nakamura puts his bishop in on g6. Black plays knight d7 to try and lift the pressure. It's worth noting here that after bishop e6, I think the simplest move is check and then takes on g7. This should be winning. Uh, so in the game, knight d7 was played. Bishop g3, just with the idea of bishop h4. And that is actually mate. So king g5, and now rook e4. And out of nowhere, white has fashioned a forced mate. So, to summarise that game, you know, white built up pressure as a result of controlling the central file. With black completely unable to, uh, to dent white's control of the centre and look in the final position, white's still controlling that file. White managed to fashion a big attack and in the end, a very nice forced mate.